would like to thank the organizers to give me the opportunity to talk on behalf of the Janssen team, and quite many of those are here in the room, um, about the latest data and our current thinking. Not good? Like this? And our current thinking around silencing RNA. And you all know that we have um, stepped into an agreement with Arrowhead to further develop their siRNA compound, which is called ROHBV. And the study we're discussing today will be called ROHBV 1001. But from now on, we will use the term 3989, J&J &J 3989, as the name for the same compound. Earlier this morning, we have heard a lot of interesting discussion about um, what HBS means and the reduction of HBS means in the context of very different settings. And we interestingly discussed about um, the natural disease, more so the, the context of nuke long-term treatment, and maybe even more interesting, the stopping of the nuke. Now, my talk will only focus on the third bullet, which is uh, what does it mean if we want to go to functional cure with finite treatment? And there, you see, our main hypothesis is um, following the idea that the reduction or elimination of S antigen will help the host immune system to respond and to take over and will allow us to go into a finite treatment with siRNA, but potentially in combination with other drugs as well. So you've seen at EASL that, um, now I have to, yeah, that um, j and 3989 was able to show a very potent direct inhibition of S antigen, but also a good reduction of all other viral transcripts, including E, RNA, and DNA um, in context with the nuke, so the reduction of DNA needs to be seen in that context. What I wanted to very briefly um, focus your attention on is the construction of 3989. It actually is a mix of two triggers. And as you can see here, one trigger covers um, the X open reading frame and the other trigger uh, goes to the S. And that is kind of um, different to other um, companies or other compounds that are in development. The combination of those two um, are both or both triggers are uh, linked to Galnac so that they are highly um, selectively being brought into the liver cell. And there, um, the, the S part is taking care of coverage of both um, transcripts from integrated um, viral DNA as well as from CCC DNA. And the concept of these multiple triggers has been discussed um, repeatedly, mainly to give a broader coverage across genotypes to avoid development of resistance. The data we're going to um, look at is a study that is constantly in evolving, expanding, and um, getting more patients into it. And we are now looking at the published data, but you will see next week updates with um, much larger cohorts. So all these cohorts that we are now looking at with four patients each, um, when the majority of these cohorts will be um, augmented to eight patients, and we will talk about more Pay, uh, more cohorts with different doses, but that will be left to the, to the conference at ASLD. So today, we look at the baseline characteristics and the two different principles that are tested here in this, in this study. You see that there is a large amount of cohorts going for monthly or four weekly injections. There's one cohort that looked at biweekly or every other week injections, and there are three cohorts looking at weekly injections to see what the optimal interval between, um, between those doses is. You see that the study was done in the Asia-Pacific um, region, so only Asian or Pacific Islander patients, and that is also reflected in the genotype distribution. If we quickly focus on, on these different groups that we're looking at here, you have patients that were kind of all comers, some E positive, some E negative. There was no cutoff for the S antigen. Um, there were NUC, NUC experience patients, and the E negative and NUC experience are clearly in the majority in these groups. But there were two extra cohorts that had um, focused on E positive only, and one cohort here, as you see in um, nuke 
naive patients and the other cohort in Nuke experienced patients. And the last cohort again, the three last cohorts with these different intervals again are cohorts where um, patients were included as they came. Again, majority with E negative and Nuke experienced status. So the data, and now focus on S antigen alone, has been shown like this here with this very typical pattern of all, um, all groups showing a strong reduction within the three injections that were given, right? You see here the, the four month, and now we're focusing on the monthly injection here first. And you see all these different doses or baseline characteristics. The brown and the black are those groups that, are that were entered only E positive, and uh, the other, other groups were kind of showing very similar patterns and no clear dose response between 100 and 400 milligram tested. In addition, the second group here is the, um, is the look at the patients that had shorter treatment intervals. And again, only three injections. So um, some were actually done with one month of treatment. And you see a very comparable pattern and no clear difference that these shorter intervals would uh, improve or uh, augment the, the efficacy here. So that um, that to the conclusion that the four weeks is the right uh, in injection interval to use. And you see that the, the mean reductions in the HBE antigen negative and the HBE antigen positives here in these groups um, were very close together. Slight um, impression that the E do a little better here in black and, bl and brown, but that is mainly driven by very high levels at start and um, did not really show that there is a clear difference, much in contrast to the earlier compounds from Arrowhead where it only worked in E positive patients. So the same data shown a bit differently here and here with a focus on the individual declines. And um, let me walk you through here. This is really showing that only three patients in this whole cohort of 40 were starting below 100 um, units of S antigen. All others were much higher. And you can see here um, that there is a very general trend downwards from baseline to nadir. And that is kind of clearly shown also if we compare the median of baseline with the median of um, nadir. Nadir usually being uh, way after the last injection, we always say day 113 is probably the time for, for getting into the nadir here. And um, at the same time, you also see that red and black are kind of behaving comparably so that there is no clear um, benefit to one or the other in these groups. And just another slide to look again at the, at the cohort here um, to, to illustrate what was achieved. As I said, the majority of patients except three um, were in the range of more than 100. And half of the patients were in the range of more than 1,000 um, units at baseline. And then with these three injections, you can see and appreciate that uh, actually a large proportion, 88%, was able to go below 100, which is a very interesting cutoff um, to use with these three injections. Some patients uh, did even better, but obviously uh, we are very excited about going into uh, longer treatments now and to, to understand or better um, prove that there might be a very, um, very uh, profound um, further reduction if we go beyond only three injections. So we, I promise that there will be some uh, updates uh, next week. Actually, on Friday, we have um, a regular poster from Ed Gain who will not only mm, kind of confirm what I just showed you with duplicating those um, <laughs> monthly injection cohorts from four to eight patients. We, only, uh, we also have eight patients each with lower doses so that we might uh, understand um, the dose response better. That will all be presented in a poster um, on Friday. And then, very importantly, um, the next steps <coughs> will all be, already be discussed with the late breaker poster. The second poster here presented from um, MFUN on Monday, where we are for the first time running um, a combination of the siRNA with our capsid assembly modulator in 12 patients for 12 weeks. 
So this mainly done to show it is safe prior to going into a larger phase to B study, which is just the next part of my next steps. This is our Reef 1 study, a large study, 450 patients. It is ongoing, it is actively enrolling and going for 48 weeks of treatment with 3989 and or 6379, which is our capsid assembly modulator on the backbone <coughs> of a nuke, comparing against um, a placebo nuke arm. And that will be obviously some time before we can talk about it, but we're very excited to see that this has been kicked off. A very short side note here, just to, yeah, we have seen this cycle plenty of times today. This is a very simplified one where we just also want to, um, to focus on this additional aspect of the capsid assembly modulation where we were able to show, at least in um, primary human hepatocytes, that there is this primary mechanism of action that everybody is, is not, uh, aware about and everybody was able to show already, um, which is the encapsidation of RNA into the capsid. But the replenishment of CCC DNA as the secondary mode of action is still something that um, we feel is, is very much justifying to, to see hope for longer treatments and to see hope in um, combination treatments with our siRNA. So last but not least, Back to the primary hypothesis, if we bring down S, we believe that this is taken away a very relevant and important immune suppressant, and then um, we, we postulate that without an active immune component in this, in this combination treatment, we will be able to get to functional cure. The side note I mentioned um, is just a proposal. We always use CAM1 for our CAM and others use CAM1 for their CAM. Why don't we leave these numbers and just use letters? We could uh, use normal for normal geometry and abnormal for abnormal geometry. This is our proposal from today on. We will use CAMN for our class. In summary, um, we could show that three subcutaneous injections in considerable number of patients um, was well tolerated in doses up to 400 milligram. Um, the RNA, and that is not here, it's in the backup slides, was able to reduce um, all measurable viral products. So uh, beyond the S antigen that I showed here, we could only also show E antigen reduction and um, we were um, able to show RNA reduction as well. Um, in, the, in the majority of our patients, these three doses led to, um, to really rapidly um, reaching of cutoffs that are believed to be um, associated with improved chances to zero clear. And that, as I showed you, in the majority of patients with a cutoff down to 100, let's be optimistic for longer treatments that we go even lower. Um, the HBS antigen responses shown here in different populations are consistent with its ability to silence RNA, not only from CCC DNA, but also from host integrated viral RNA that has been shown in E positive and E negative. And last but not least, um, we are running larger and longer uh, treatment studies in phase 2B right now, and we're very excited to share such data with you later on.